Today, I want to talk to you about the FCG1 Panasonic ToughPad. There's a lot of walkthrough videos and telling you about the basic specs of the FCG1 ToughPad, such as that it's IP65 rated, or that it has a 4 foot drop rating, sunlight viewable touchscreen, etc. But what I want to walk you through today is a few things, little known features of the FCG1 ToughPad. Um, just the features that are not quite intuitive that you can't really find out just by clicking around. So the first thing that I'd like to jump into is what's standardly known as a right click. If you were holding a mouse and operating a standard computer, the left click would be here and the right click would be here. It operates a different function with the actual PC. So it's not very intuitive. It's a touch screen. It's not very intuitive because it's operating on a Windows 7, Windows 8 thing. You should be able to right click, but it doesn't really... Uh, it's not very intuitive on how you do that. So let me just go through, and there's two different ways you can right click. First of all, and the easiest way, would be by just holding your finger down, and the cursor, you can't see it, it's underneath my finger, actually gets a gray circle around the cursor. That brings up the right click. So it's the same thing if you right clicked onto a desktop with a standard desktop PC, it would pull up this window, etc. So you can also right click anywhere you want. So right clicking on screensaver over here opens up the right right click window. Second way you can do that is with the stylus. Now the stylus is stored back here on its cord and it's this little gray button right here. Now the gray button doesn't require a lot of effort to push you just hold it down and you get that same gray circle around your cursor. It's kinda hard to see because it's very small but that gives you the standard right click. Okay, a few things about the FCG1. It comes with a few standard buttons. There's a button labeled A1, A2, and these are intuitive. It has a volume down, volume up, has the Windows button that you can click, which will bring up the Windows Run menu. You have the lock feature, which would be this button. So the ToughPad comes with a gyroscope inside it. Uh, actually, that's locked right now a gyroscope inside it that can turn on auto rotate so it kind of formulates it with whatever way you tilt the pad and it is if you wanted to turn that off you would turn auto lock off or on with that button it shows auto rotate off so that's that button and then a power button so a total of seven buttons down here on the bottom row now their auto default um, program the A1 will bring up a dashboard for the Panasonic PC. Now I would not suggest doing anything with this button, that's a very useful button to have. A2 is a little different however, if you click on that and let's close that. If you hit A2 it brings up by standard default settings the writing keyboard. So if I wanted to say hi, oh I'm messing up there. Okay so it brings up the writing keyboard that you can switch between keyboard or actually writing. You probably should use the digitizer. You can use your finger for it. It's sensitive enough, but the digitizer makes it easier. I'm sorry, the stylus with the digitizer makes it easier. So the funny thing about that is that A2, that is always stored over here, that keyboard right here, and it's pretty easy to bring up without that button. So you might want to, an interesting feature about it, reprogram that button for a different use that you use more often. And to do that, you'd pull up that Panasonic PC dashboard, and like I said, you don't want to reprogram the A1 button, not necessarily, because it's a really useful button. It brings up your, D, your PC dashboard. And so you have your basic icons here, PC Info Viewer, Touch Calibration. That's an interesting one to get your touch really calibrated for your screen. If it feels that your touch isn't quite as sensitive or quite on uh, point as it should be, that's where you'd recalibrate your touch. And you go through a whole program where it recalibrates the whole touch screen. And you touch it with the uh, stylus and your finger to recalibrate both. But then to reprogram the buttons, you go over to System, Tablet Buttons, and we'll say Change Settings. And that brings up a menu with A1 and A2. And you can choose to change what those pro uh, buttons do with pressing and holding. So by default, they don't have any settings functions for them when you hold it down. So you might want to program a holding down function for A1 and A2 and re reprogram the settings for A2 and you do that by just clicking on whichever button you want it has A1 and A2 hitting change 
and just kind of go through the program and you have the option for the press and the option for the press and hold and like I said by default the press and hold has none set so if we wanted to program something for the press and hold it comes up with options everything from just change display orientation scroll down open the favorites menu etc there's quite a few options that you can choose to reprogram those buttons so that's just an interesting function that is not really intuitive that you can utilize day to day also from this screen you can easily change the brightness of the FCG1 now the FCG1 has sunlight viewable screen so you can change it really bright and you can walk out at high noon and you'll still be able to view this screen and function with it if you're on a work site say and that would be right here now I'll keep it low so it doesn't blind out the camera but the brightness is also able to be auto-tuned to uh, set with the um, ambient light sensor which is located up here. This ambient light sensor senses how much daylight or how much sunlight, how bright the room is, etc. and will auto change the brightness. And the way you do that is we're going to walk you through doing that just because it's a nice function that you can have. So you go, um, there's a few different ways and I'll walk you through the kind of the scenic route. Okay, we're going to go to start, control panel, we're going to go to hardware and sound, power options, Panasonic power management, change plan settings. Okay, and this will change, you can change your brightness, etc. So we'll go to change advanced power settings. Scroll down to display and we will enable adaptive brightness. Now this is already on and so the enabled adaptive brightness if it gets brighter in the room it will increase the brightness of the screen dimmer it will actually decrease the the screen uh, brightness just so it's not using up a lot of battery but it's still viewable. So that's already um, red with the adaptive light sensor right up there or the, I'm sorry the ambient light sensor. So <clears throat> We're actually going to show you how to actually use the ambient light sensor as a eighth button that is not usually uh, usually utilized. So we're actually going to click on A1. That's going to bring up that dashboard. We're going to go over to Basic, and then we're going to go to Power Plan EX, Change Settings, and then right there it says Ambient Light Sensor Power Management Options. If I can click off it. So we're going to open that up, and that actually turns the ambient light sensor, which is located on the right, into an eighth button, and you have a few different options. Right now I have it set to sleep, but you can set it to do nothing, so that it just deactivates that as a button. Turn off the display, turn off the display and lock the computer, launch the screensaver, sleep, and hibernate. So that actually turns it into an eighth function button, just make it easier to navigate around that. So I'll keep that on sleep, and I'll demonstrate that a little later when I want to put the unit to sleep. One of the things that is useful about the FCG1 is that they have cameras that are able to take pictures of documents, important things on the work site, etc. And based on your model of FCG1, it could have a forward-facing webcam and a rear-facing uh, camera. And that will be launched in the basic. Again, like I said, this dashboard is very useful. It has a lot of functions. Camera utility. So we will launch that. And that brings up how to turn on, like how to launch your camera. <clears throat> so, right now it is on set to the rear facing camera. As you can see, you could always maximize that. But if I wanted to switch it over to the forward facing camera, we go to settings, select camera front and rear. And like I said, it depends on your model. Your FCG1 might not have a rear camera or front facing camera. It just depends on your model, but I just switched it over to the other camera. That's how you function with the um, camera and turn it on. You can also switch what kind of camera you're using right here in the system tab of the dashboard. We go over to camera and you can disable the camera, you can enable the camera, or you can switch what camera is being used right there. So one thing that I would like to utilize before or show off before I end this video is the stylus with digitizer. Because this is a touch screen and it follows your fingers and everything, it will also follow any touch. So say you rest your palm on that, the screen will read that 
you are touching that and it will bring the cursor over to the palm or perhaps uh, rain or something might be um, messing with where your, your cursor is located. The stylus with the FCG1 has a digitizer in it. That means that it's an electronic stylus that will override any other touch. So say I'm writing out a document or using the stylus. If the stylus is within range of the screen, and it's about an inch to two inches is considered range, it doesn't need to be touching, it will actually override any other touch on the touch screen. And so I can rest my palm on there, and if, I don't, if I'm not using the stylus, that would actually count as touching on the screen. But as soon as I bring the stylus within range of the screen, the tablet actually knows to override anything else that is touching the screen and prioritize where that digitizer is pointing. So if I'm writing or using the stylus, I can actually rest my palm on the screen and utilize it that way. So a pretty useful function of the stylus with digitizer. So that kind of wraps up just a few basic functions of the Panasonic FCG1 Tough Pad that are kind of not utilized enough and they're pretty useful. Like I said, we've changed that ambient light sensor into a eighth function button, and I've switched it to be able to turn the tough pad to sleep whenever I touch it. So with a simple touch, we can actually turn the tough pad off, or to put it, in this case, put it to sleep. I hope this helps you out with these videos, and I hope this helps you kind of navigate your FCG1 tough pad a little better. If you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call, and we can help you out with any tough pads. Talk to you soon.